Hey, welcome to Garage Noise. Chris here, and this channel is all about helping you with your repair or restoration project. I'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on techniques, tools, and products to use so you can get the best results possible. The first step in repairing a dent is to straighten the damaged metal, and this is a key step in this process because the whole goal is to use as little filler as possible on your repair. Now I'll start by evaluating this dent. So I take a look at how that dent was created, where our low areas are and how we need to attack it. Now I've stripped out the internals of this door and I can see a portion of this dent is right on that internal brace. Now there's a good portion above it. We can dolly and shape that out, but we'll have to use some different techniques for the portion that's on the brace. You can see there's about a 12 inch crease. And then at the end of the dent, there's a low area and that's where that stopped. Um, so we need to pull that out, but I'm going to start by pulling out this crease towards the rear of this dent. I'm going to use some Kiko glue tabs. Now this is like a serpentine glue tab that I can lay right on that crease. We'll glue it on and then I'll use my slide hammer to pull or slide hammer that dent out. Now when I'm pulling that dent out, I'm going to use a hammer to tap around the outside of that dent and knock down any high areas because it's all about leveling out the metal in preparation for filler. These Kiko tools are really good quality tools. I don't have links to these products in the description, but you can find them at their website. I have used some of the inexpensive tool kits on Amazon and they work pretty well for smaller dents. And I'll leave a link to the one I used in the description. Now I'm not expecting these glue tabs to take this dent out totally and not with the shape of this dent and the way it's creased. My goal here is to pull out that crease while I flatten the metal around it. So here I have an adapter that will slide onto the slide hammer and then I slide it over that centipede tab. And now I can put some pressure on this and slide hammer this dent out. I'm gonna have Darius hold this door while I pull it. You can see these glue tabs really have some pulling power as you can see that door flex. Now you can over pull these dents so you wanna be careful with that. Now I'm going to switch over to a smaller adapter that allows me to be more precise with where I'm pulling. So if there's a certain low area that I want to remove, I can slide it right on that low area right here towards the end. There you can see it released and I'm removing the glue and cleaning it up. And we've got a pretty good pull on this. I did, did get over pulled just a little bit, but we can dolly that around and there'll be some techniques that I'll show you later on in this video. I'll apply a glue tab at the end of this dent on that low area. And then we'll put another centipede glue tab at the front part of this crease. I need to pull that out just a little bit more. Here I'm putting some tension on this crease where I tap around the crown that was created by this dent. I over pull this crease just a little bit and because it's right on the brace, I can just tap down that high area and flatten it out, level it. I tried to slide hammer this a few times and it wasn't pulling out like I wanted and I was afraid I was going to over pull it. So what I did is I just put some tension on that and I tapped down around it and that released the pressure in the dent. And a lot of times that's what happens. If you can pull the center of that dent and tap down around it, you're going to release the energy that's stored in that dent and allow it to level out. Before I go ahead and grind this metal clean, while I have paint on it and it's easy to see, I'm going to tap down any high areas that I can. While tapping down some of these high areas, I found that the metal has been stretched and it's a little bit too flexible. So we need to tighten up that metal. I'm going to use a couple different techniques to do that. I'll use a hammer and dolly, and then I'll show you how to shrink metal with the G90E. Now I'll use a toe dolly like this. I'll put it inside the door on the center of the dent, and then I'll tap down the outside of that dent, allow that pressure to release and level out and strengthen that metal. Darius is going to go ahead and grind this with an angle grinder and a 36 grit roll lock disc. We're going to remove all the paint in this area. And then I'm going to show you how we can shrink this metal and firm that metal up because this is not tight yet, not ready for filler. For that, we're going to use the G90E. This is the G90E. This wells a tip 
on the center of a low area or a dent, and you can slide hammer or pull it out. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go over all those low areas that I find, and I'm going to pull those and hammer around them to strengthen up that metal and level this out. So we'll work this panel, remove these dents, and then I'll show you how we shrink it to firm up this metal for filler. have this about ready for body filler. So this was a little bit stretched. This metal was just a little bit stretched and it got to where it was tin canny. So it would have too much flex in it to apply body filler. You want to make sure your metal is firm, but look at this metal now. It's nice and firm. It's nice and tight. What I did is I shrank it just a little bit and I used the G90E to shrink it. I put it on setting four, which is the shrink setting. Now you're you're supposed to put a different tip on it, but I just used the triangle tip at high and I shrank that metal. Pulled out that metal, it was high. I shrank that high area. I did kind of a circle, shrank it, and that tightened up that metal enough that I, can do I could dolly it around with a hammer, a dolly, a spoon, and flatten it out. Pull on the low areas, tap down the high area, and it tightened that metal up enough where we can put some filler on it and not have it flex when we try and block it straight. I'm gonna go ahead and 80 grit this. Still has a few low areas, but it's gonna be a very thin coat of filler to get this straight. And I wanna leave it in just a little bit so we can apply that filler and block sand it straight. We're using 80 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander to prepare the area around this dent for filler. We've got this all feather edged out for body filler. It feels like there's a little bit of a crown here, so I'm gonna knock that down. Give it a good, see the brace is right in here, so this is really firm right here. So we're gonna give a couple good whacks with this. There you go. That's nice and flat. One more right here. Now we can lay a little filler in here with no worries. Beautiful. Go over with this, uh, the metal file, just to show you what, what highs are left. This will show you the high areas and how your metal is shaped. So it's hitting here, hitting here, hitting here. This is uniform, this is uniform. This is a little bit low, but that's okay because we're gonna put a skim coat of filler over it. Now Darius is gonna go ahead and clean it before we lay in our filler. We're using isopropyl alcohol, and then we're gonna use some 3M Platinum Plus filler. This mixes up 50 to one or 2% hardener. You wanna fold it in till it's all one uniform color. You don't wanna have any streaks and you don't wanna stir it. That's gonna introduce air into the filler. And then when you lay it in, you could have pinholes, which are gonna create issues as you're blocking this out. So when we're laying this filler, we wanna press it in. So I get a controlled amount on my spreader and I'll press it into the panel. This is going to help also eliminate pinholes and air in your filler. It also helps with adhesion. You want that filler to reach all those little cracks and crevices or imperfections in that metal so it adheres properly. You also want to make sure it's smooth around the edges. This will help in the blocking process and straightening your filler when you go to block it. So we're trying to make it as smooth as possible and it's not crucial if it's not perfectly smooth because we are gonna be sanding most of this off. The next step in this process is gonna be to block and shape this body filler and get it primered and into paint. 
but you don't want to just use any primer. You want to use the right primer for this repair. If you want to learn how, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.